What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Observant Lineman. Uh, the NCAA is finally following the lead of what the state of California has uh, brought to the table, the law that they've passed, allowing players to make money off of their own likeness. And for anybody who has been a college athlete, this is absolutely huge news. Let's get to it. So the NCAA clears the way for athletes to profit from names, images, and likeness. Now, this is something that, you know, I look at this and I and I and I breathe a sigh of relief for those student athletes who have uh, you know, been playing at a collegiate level, you know, have been kind of, you know, working their way through uh, college. Uh, obviously, they have a free ride with scholarships, but at the end of the day, you know, you're not allowed to make money when you're not allowed to actually uh, create income for yourself. It doesn't matter if you have a free education. Uh, you still have to find ways to put food on your table. You still have to find ways to be able to afford to uh, live with everyday uh, costs. And that's something that, you know, for me as an athlete, I remember those days. I remember the days of uh, you know, getting 600 bucks to last you the entire month. You use 300 of that on rent. Then you got 300 left. Well, by the time you get groceries, by the time you put some gas in your car, if you have a car, by the time you, you know, go out a couple times throughout the month, get some, get something to eat, get something to drink, hang out, you know, you're squeezing pennies at the end of that time. And California set an amazing precedent by uh, passing a law that allowed for players to use their likeness, that allowed players to uh, seek endorsements, allowed players to be able to be paid to be in things like commercials, uh, allowed players to be able to be paid uh, for signing jerseys, signing cards. Uh, these are all things that people would make money off of the athletes for. Like, people don't, don't understand that, you know, when you look at a student athlete situation, the ones who are the big time athletes, the, the household names for their universities, uh, those guys are able to actually go out and, you know, create a brand. And that's something that wasn't available to athletes like myself. That's something that wasn't available to, that isn't available right now to athletes who are currently playing. Uh, but let's go through this article from ESPN because this is really big news. Really would like to go through all of this. Uh, it says the NCAA's top decision makers voted unanimously Tuesday to start the process of modifying its rule to allow college athletes to profit from their names, images, and likenesses uh, in a manner consistent with the co collegiate model. Now, what does that mean? I don't think that we've been, you know, we're able to necessarily define what that really means right now in terms of uh, how this rule and how this rule change will actually uh be played out and how it will benefit the players from a full perspective. We don't have that yet, uh, but I'm sure that that will be defined here in the, in the near future. Uh, but it says here, the board directed the three separate divisions of the organization to immediately begin figuring out how to update their rules in a way that maintains a distinction between co uh, college and professional sports. Uh, the board members said in a release Tuesday that all changes should make sure student athletes have the same opportunities to make money as all other students maintain the priorities of education and the collegiate experience and ensure that rules are transparent, focused, and enforceable and do not create a competitive imbalance. That's big uh, because one of the things that is a legitimate concern about this rule coming into play has always been, you know, what does this mean for the smaller colleges? What does this mean for the mid-level colleges that don't have necessarily the same draw as an Alabama, as a Notre Dame, as a Michigan, uh, as a uh, you know USC, as a uh, Oklahoma, as a Texas. You know those schools, can, the smaller schools in this scenario can be drowned out and can you know in a way suffer uh, in recruiting because of the exposure that they won't be able to gain. Uh, whether it be on national TV for their for games that are nationally televised or 
the uh, local opportunities around campus uh, that will present themselves uh, for athletes uh, that go to bigger schools. And that is something that um, is a concern. You know, that can create a competitive imbalance. Now, I'm not sure how they're going to approach that. I'm not really sure if there is a way to really, you know, stem that from happening. But uh, nonetheless, uh, this is a new rule that's going to be moving forward. And I think, you know, it's absolutely something that uh, will benefit and will make, will enrich the, the college experience for these athletes. Uh, it says the board wants each division to implement new rules by January 2021. So they've got a whole year to get ready for this. <clears throat> we must embrace change to provide the best possible experience for college athletes. Board chair Michael Drake said additional flexibility in the area can and must continue to support college sports as a part of higher education. This modernization for the future is a natural extension of the numerous steps the NCAA members have taken in recent years to improve support for student athletes, including full cost of attendance and guaranteed scholarships. The association's board of governors gathered Tuesday morning in Atlanta on the campus of Emory University for its final regularly scheduled meeting of 2019. Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith and Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman presented recommendations to the board members on how to modify the NCAA rules on students profiting from their names, images, and likenesses. Smith and Ackerman have spent the past several months spearheading a working group that was appointed to evaluate the issue. So uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, you know, the thing about, uh, you know, setting these rules up is, is the thing that's going to be most difficult is where do you draw the line uh, and the difference between a player who is, uh, you know, who is a well-known athlete, a player who's able to go out and get an endorsement, player who's able to go out and, uh, you know, be able to sign autographs and make money off of those autographs, make money off of those jerseys, those cards, what have you. Um, how do you draw the line between that and a player who's being paid under the table? Uh, there's a big uh, uh, risk there that the NCAA is going to have to find a way to deal with in regards to how do you keep uh, this issue from this rule from being abused. And, you know, when I sit and I think about it, I really feel like, um, you know, it's going to that's going to kind of be the double edged sword of this entire situation. Um you know, players who can get paid off of their off of their image and off of their likeness uh, will naturally uh, be offered probably more money than what w what a business would usually pay uh, in order to secure their likeness. And, um, you know, it really does change the way that the economics of college sports will work. How is this new norm going to benefit uh, everyone, uh, as time goes, you really have to think about the big schools who have, you know, big TV contracts. You have to think about the schools who have, uh, you know, the highest ratings. Uh, you have to think about that top 25. That top 25 becomes that much more important now. And uh, I think this also opens up uh, the floodgates for corporations to become to become involved with the players more directly. Uh, and that's something that will you know, that will grow the sport and will grow collegiate sports themselves into uh, somewhat more of a professional style of uh, governing as far as the, as far as their uh, the images go for these leagues. The working group was formed in May, months after a pair of lawmakers proposed bills to make NCAA rules about endorsement deals illegal. In California, Democratic State Senator Nancy Skinner wrote a bill that was signed into law late in late September. That law will prohibit California schools from punishing their athletes for accepting endorsement money starting in January of 2023. However, Smith said Tuesday that the NCAA's new the NCAA's new rules would not follow the California model of a virtually unrestricted market. He said the working group would remain involved in sorting out the details of how to implement new rules and the NCAA would likely stay involved as the group in charge of regulating future endorsement deals. U.S. Cong Congressman Mark Walker uh, proposed a bill to change the federal tax code in a way that would likely force the NCAA to give all student athletes the right to sell their names, images, and likenesses. And that, that's big. Changing the, the federal changing the federal tax code in a way that would likely force the NCAA to give all student athletes the right to sell their names, 
images, and likenesses. That's big. And that's going to be something that's going to benefit every college athlete out there. Um, it's really going to give them an opportunity to uh, create their own brand, to build up their own net worth, uh, and to further their, you know, the possibilities for them after they're done playing the sport in, at a collegiate level. And, you know, I'm all for something like that. The current proposal would create an unrestricted market for college athletes to seek endorsement deals. Walker said earlier this month that he hoped to bring the bill to a vote in early 2020, which could mean it would go into effect in January 2021. <clears throat> Walker said that he plans to continue moving forward with his proposed legislation to make sure the NCAA's announcement this week turns into real action. We clearly have the NCAA's attention. Now we need to have their action. While their words are promising, they have used words in the past to deny equity and basic constitutional rights for student athletes. And, you know, I wholeheartedly agree with that. You know, you're, you're, and your prevention of student athletes from being able to gain on their own skill and on their own popularity, that has been a hindrance to college athletes for, since the beginning, since the outset of the institution of the NCAA. And I think that it's about time that we have something to change that. More than a dozen states have expressed interest in creating laws similar to California's in the past several months. Florida Governor uh, Ron DeSantis last week voiced his support for a bill introduced in his state that could go into effect sometime this summer if passed in its current form. The variety of solutions proposed in different states prompted NCAA leaders, including President Mark Emmert, to say that they would prefer a uniform national law or rule that applies to all members of their association. Smith said that state and federal laws provided the NCAA with a kick in the butt to speed up the, uh, to speed up the discussions that had been occurring for several years. Uh, so in essence, you know, the NCAA has been dragging their feet for years and uh, the government has actually gotten involved to force their hand. The government has decided on, from the state level to begin the process of tearing down that border that keeps athletes from being able to make money. And I think that this is one of those times when the government is actually working for the people. It's actually working for these student athletes and forcing the NCAA to take notice, to stop giving us lip service and to start showing results. And I think that that's huge for the athletes of today. Skinner said Tuesday that she was optimistic about the steps the NCAA took Tuesday, but will closely will be closely monitoring the details on how rules change in the next few years. The NCAA has put the onus on leaders from its different divisions to figure out those details as they decide exactly what parameters will be put in place to govern new opportunities for students to make money. Emmert said he expects uh, member schools will quickly, quickly agree to the college athletes uh, will quickly agree that college athletes should be able to profit from activities that aren't aren't directly related to activities unconnected to being an athlete. But the devil is in the details when it comes to deciding what type of change will come and allowing things like sponsorship deals that are directly related to a student's popularity for being an athlete. Uh, Ramoga Huma, founder of the National College Players Association, said he viewed Tuesday's announcement as a failure that doesn't go far enough to show the organization is truly interested in supporting athletes. The NCAA has failed on this issue once again, Huma said. This is another attempt at stalling on the issue. I would like to know the context that he's speaking in uh, more clearly uh, to really be able to kind of give my thoughts on that. But uh, I will say that as long as you have representatives from our governments, uh, on the state, from the state level, and even from the, you know, from the federal level with our tax code, uh, giving players the opportunity to make money, uh, I think that that's the first logical step that we have to take. And then from there, we can start to fine tune it over the years. It says another federal bill that will likely allow for some NCAA regulation is expected soon. Representative Anthony Gonzalez, a Republican from Ohio and former college and professional football player, plans to introduce his own legislation in the coming months. Gonzalez played wide receiver at Ohio State. I remember Anthony, Anthony Gonzalez uh, during Smith's first two years as athletic director for the Buckeyes. Gonzalez said he has talked to Smith about ways to install guardrails to avoid unintended negative consequences while making what Gonzalez considers to be some necessary changes. Gonzalez previously said he wanted to hear what Smith and Ackerman proposed 
in Tuesday's meeting before introducing new legislation. The NCAA's typical legislative process runs from November through April. Uh, the deadline to propose new rules for the board's consideration is this week, but exceptions have been made in the past to consider late proposals. After soliciting feedback from leaders of all three divisions of college sports, the board votes uh, on proposed rules during their annual April meeting. Let's uh, kind of surmise here. Now, you know, for me, there's a few things that, that I, I think about in this. One of them is, what does this mean for the universities? And I think, you know, in a nutshell, this means that the rich are going to get richer. This means that the universities are going to bank even more. Because one thing that I can see them doing in the future, as far as these rules changes go, is they're going to require that athletes pay a percentage of that back into the athletic program. The percentage, a percentage of the money they make each year off of their endorsements, off of their uh, uh, selling their likeness and, you know, selling their brand, uh, they're going to be required as a student athlete who's there on a full scholarship to pay a percentage of that back into the university. So that's only going to make the university stronger, you know, 10%, you know, an agent fee almost because you're getting free school, a free education, uh, they're going to want something in return. And I think that's where the only uh, incentive is for the NCAA to change their rules, because even if all of these state governments are changing rules and allowing players to sell their likeness, you still have to deal with the fact that uh, on a federal level, it's not required. So if they want, they can actually ignore it or minimize it to the point where it doesn't actually uh, give players the benefits that they're seeking. Um, but I think that overall, this is a massive first step. If the NCAA is held to its word and if their hand is forced, I think this is a massive first step for collegiate athletes to be able to uh, free themselves from what is really kind of a bond, a bondage that they're in under the NCAA's rules because the current rule structure uh, is is not very, uh, it doesn't allow the flexibility for the athletes uh, to be able to one, uh, you know, get a degree in some of the fields that players may desire to get a degree in, mainly because of the way that their schedule plays out uh, through, the, through the fall semester. So like myself, uh, I wanted to go to Purdue to study computer graphics engineering. I wasn't able to do that because half of the classes that I would have had to take that semester are classes that start at 7.30 at night. And practice starts at three and you don't get out of the building until around nine, 9.30. So there would have been no way for me to actually go to those classes. There would have been no way for me to actually uh, seek the degree that I actually wanted to go to that school to seek especially with a school that specializes in engineering like Purdue does. But tell me what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the Observant Lyman Uche Waneri. The NCAA is finally moving their feet. That's a good thing to see. I appreciate everybody for coming and checking out my video. I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.